A lot of people think that traps or tricks in chess only work against really bad players at low levels who just make terrible moves. It's actually not true. In this video, I'm gonna show you five games at master level where players fell for some really clever tricks. We're gonna be looking at the Sicilian defense in all five of these games, and we're gonna end with the double queen checkmate in 15 moves that you saw on the thumbnail. Let's jump right in. All right, so this first trap was between two players who you can see were just shy of 2,400. We start out with G6, which is called the Hyper Accelerated Dragon Variation. So a lot of times when the players play the Sicilian, they play the Dragon Variation, but this G6 move comes a little bit later. Hyper Accelerated means they're just playing it right away. We have D4, Bishop to G7, and then Knight C3. So White's developing the Knights. This is pretty standard stuff. Knight C6 and Bishop to E3. Okay, knight f6, everybody's just kind of developing pieces. Bishop c4 lining up on the weak f7 pawn. So black castles and deals with that problem right away. Now white plays the move bishop to b3, and black plays knight to a5. Now, this is actually a big mistake. And it looks like a very natural move. White, a black is trying to trade off the knight for this annoying bishop and then go about their business. Like I mentioned, crucial mistake. I'll give you a second. See if you can figure out what move do you think white played next. Well, if you said e5, you are correct. Now, e5 is obviously attacking the knight. And if we check, where can the knight move to? Well, this square is covered. This square is covered. This square is covered by the queen. And if the knight goes to h5, well, then white can actually play g4. And guess what? Now it's kind of trapped. Can't really go anywhere so that really only leaves knight to e8 uh, which was played in the game now at this point you might be thinking okay um well that's great we made the knight move but how do we follow up and this is where the mind-boggling move came that white played again if you want to pause the video or just think about it for a few seconds what do you think white played in this position Well, to the shock of the black player, white played bishop takes f7 check. Now, let's just talk about this move for a second because it looks really bad. There's two pieces that can just take the bishop for free, and it's kind of like, okay, and how is white even going to follow up after black takes the piece? So let's start with um, what was not played in the game, but let's start with if they take with the rook. Do you see any follow up for white? That's correct. Knight to e6 is a killer move. Attacking the queen, and this pawn is actually pinned, so that if black tries to take, they're going to lose the queen that way. So then you might say, well, black's going to move the queen to safety. Okay, well, you can't go there. You can't go there. Where's the queen going to go? It's trapped. So amazing little setup here, sacrificing the bishop to open up this queen trap. So with that in mind, black decided, you know what, I better take with the king, so that if the knight moves there, at least I can capture it. I don't have to worry about getting my queen trap. Well, what do you think white played anyway? That's right, knight to e6. So as we already talked about, the queen is still trapped. And so the only move for black at this point is king takes e6. And you can already start to see how this is not going to end well for black. White followed up with queen to d5 check. And now the only move for black is king to f5. Now white played the move g4 check. And notice the bishop is covering these squares. The pawn is taking away this. The queen's covering all of these. So the only thing black can do is capture the pawn. And now there's actually mate in four moves. If you want to pause the video, figure out if you could figure out what to play here, go ahead and do that. And if you're ready to just see the solution, here we go. Rook to g1 check was played in the game, forcing the king. Again, this is covered. This is covered. They could go back to F, uh, f5. Okay, but then there's just uh, immediate checkmate. Rook g5 is checkmate right away. So black decided to go king h4 in the game. White played the move queen to g2, and it is now mate in two. There's no way for black to uh, get out of this jam. And obviously, you can see why the queen and the rook are here. Bishop is here. Best try for black would be something like, uh, let's say, d6 to stop the checkmate here. But then white simply plays queen g3, king h5, and queen g5 checkmate. So going back a few moves, all that started from this amazing bishop sacrifice right here, 
followed by bringing the knight in, sacrificing two pieces in order to lure the king out, and then the queen and rook were able to follow up for the checkmate. All right, the next trap we have here is with black, and this is a game where black was 2,500 playing against a 2,200. Now, they're both strong players, but obviously 2,500 is much better than 2,200, and you're going to see in this game how the black player really took advantage of some subtle mistakes that the 2,200 made. So I want you to pay close attention. I'll point out the moment in the game um, where I want you to pay attention to. So we had just an open Sicilian uh, traded off the knights here. Bishop to d3, g6, castles. Everything is kind of fine here. Everybody's just developing the pieces. And let's get to the point here. So rook to b8, uh, putting a very annoying rook here because obviously white would probably like to complete their development. Now they have to think about how they want to do that without losing the pawn. And so they play queen e2. Makes, makes sense, right? Defending the pawn uh, that way. Black plays d6 and f3. Now, as soon as white plays the move f3, they've created a couple of weaknesses. And the weaknesses are along these dark squares, right? The pawn normally would control those squares and it is no longer controlling those. Now there is this bishop here. Uh, so you might think, well, white's position is totally fine, but black actually noticed something about this and decided to take advantage of the weaknesses along these dark squares right away. So black played the move queen to b6, check. And normally in a position like this, white would want to just block with the bishop. But now they're going to be losing this pawn because there's this battery lined up there. So you can see the power of this open file. So white decided, okay, well, I can't do that. I'll just um, slide my king over to h1. Pretty logical looking move. And now black actually plays a very sneaky move, knight to h5. You know, one of the principles in chess is don't put your, your knights on the rim. Well, obviously, when you're uh, at the you know grandmaster level, you can break rules if you know what you're doing. And clearly that was the case here. Knight to h5 is actually unleashing this bishop because black would like to gain even more control, sorry, over these dark squares. So white plays the move rook b1 because they really want to get their bishop developed, but they can't because the, you know, the annoying capture here. So they play rook to b1. Now black plays bishop to d4, doesn't let white get control of that diagonal. So you can see how black is really taking control of those dark squares. And now we have knight to a4 attacking the queen. And obviously white is hoping that the queen, let's say, retreats. And then they could probably play something like bishop e3 and get out of this jam that they're in. But black actually plays the move queen to a5. And now white has to deal with the knight being attacked. b3 defends the knight. And by the way, this was a huge blunder. What do you think black played next? Go ahead and pause the video if you'd like. There is a killer move here for black. It's not that easy to find. But I'll give you a second. I think maybe some of you can find it. All right. Well, the killer move is knight to g3, creating a triple fork. The king actually can't even move because the bishop's controlling this square. So the only thing white can do is capture the knight and then the queen slides all the way over and that is a nice checkmate. And you can see how all of that started because of how black was able to take advantage of the weaknesses along the dark squares. As soon as black gained complete control of that um, diagonal, white was never able to recover and black took advantage of it with a really nice sacrifice. Remember I said, bringing the knight to the rim is normally breaking the rules in chess. Well, black obviously had a very nice idea in mind and it worked out perfectly. All right, now this next game I'm gonna show you isn't so much of a trap, it is more of a blunder, but I wanted to just point out that these big blunders even can happen as high as 2,400. You see black is rated 2,400 here and you're not gonna believe the blunder that was made in this game. So let's take a look. We have e6, um, b3, interesting approach to the e6. It's, it's not a bad idea. Fian Kettering the bishop here when, when black plays e6 in the Sicilian, so I like, kind of like that. Everybody's just developing pieces. And now, okay, black's decided, let's just close up the center. Um, you know, it creates a nice hole for black's knight, but it also allows white the, the square on d5, so it's a trade-off. And white does take advantage of that hole right away. We have d6, g3, bringing the knight here, so everybody's just developing pieces. Bishop to h3, and now black made one of the biggest blunders that I have ever seen at the 2400 level, um, but it's such a natural move that they probably either played it without thinking, or I, I don't know, they were just having a bad day, but they played the move g6. And you can probably spot it, if you wanna go ahead and pause the video, I'll give you a couple seconds. What do you think white played next?
Well, if you said knight to f6 check, you are correct. And it's actually not just check, it's checkmate. There is nowhere for the king to go. The knight's controlling both squares. It's pretty obvious. And yet, 2400 player, I don't know what to say. Even strong players blunder um, obvious things from time to time. It does happen. All right, so this trap was again with white. We had knight f3, knight c6, open Sicilian. And now black played the move e5 right away. Now, e5 right away, you have to be very careful when you play this as black because what you are doing is immediately creating a hole on d5. It's, it's very different than the lines where there's a pawn on e6 and it prevents any pieces, like particularly the knight, from going into d5. When you play e5, you don't have that luxury, so you have to watch out for that. So keep that in mind as we look at this game. Knight b5, knight c3, bishop g5. White captures. Now, black cannot capture with the queen because there's this fork here, right? So, of course, black has to capture with a pawn. And by the way, h6 was not a good move. And, um, if we, you know, if we back up, black's position is totally fine here. Um, a, a normal move like bishop to e6, even a6 chasing the knight away, bishop e7 would be fine. h6 is a crucial mistake, and you're going to see why in just a second. So, we capture... I showed you the queen cannot capture, which means black is forced to capture here. And now that hole that we talked about is a very big deal. White plays knight to d5, and the huge threat here is the knight's just going to come in and fork the king and the rook. So black obviously sees that, and what do they do? Rook to b8, so that now if the, the knight goes in, it's not a fork. The problem is the knight comes in anyway, and the king still has to move, doesn't have a lot of options, moves to d7. And I'll give you a second. What do you think white played next? That's right. If you said queen to g4, you are correct. It is mate in two from this position. Queen to g4 check. Only move for black is f5. Queen takes f5. And that is game over. Everything is covered. Not how you want to start the game. So black's crucial mistake was playing h6 when they really needed to develop a piece or do something to prevent the knights from coming in like that. So shows the risks when you when you play this e5 line so early you have to know what you're doing otherwise it can get very bad all right so the last trap is with white and this is the most exciting one let's take a look so we have e4 c5 knight f3 e6 okay d4 this is pretty standard bishop b4 this is known as the pin variation where black is uh, pinning the knight right away e5 can lead to some pretty exciting positions and that's exactly what we got knight to e4 Queen to g4. So white is basically saying, go ahead, uh, take my knight over here. Yes, it looks kind of risky, but I'm going to be creating my own attack on g7 and trying to create my own counter threats. And so you can get some really wild positions here. Black decides to capture it, and queen takes g7. Now, white is already better here, but not by much. It's still a very uh, crazy position. So rook to f8. a3 is a good move, uh, because now if the knight moves somewhere to create the discovered check, well, then white's just going to take the bishop, and there's not really any good places for the knight to move to, nothing that really creates a huge threat. The queen is too far, the knight can't really get to the rooks, and, uh, and you know anything else, you're just losing the bishop. So black retreats. So now white plays b4 to just get rid of that annoying uh, attack on the bishop, and bishop goes back, and white plays bishop to g5, putting pressure on the queen. And at this point in the game, if you check the computer, it is exactly equal, and there's one move... There's one move that black can play to equalize the position. So if you want to think about it for a second, what do you think the move is for black to play here? And this is not an easy one to find, but I'll give you guys a couple seconds. And if you want to see what black should have played to equalize the game, here you go. The move is queen takes bishop on g5, losing the queen and then capturing the knight on d4. So what happened here is remember earlier black got the knight on c3 when they captured it, right? And then just now they got the bishop. And then this bishop just took that knight. So black ended up getting three pieces. So you can see we have bishop, bishop here. And then we have these three pieces for the queen. Now, if you've seen my video on three pieces against the queen, you know that three pieces is usually better than a queen. Now, in this case, black's king is not the safest. White's queen is in a very active position. And so because of that, it's it's relatively equal position. Um, but yeah, this should be actually should be fine for black, especially as the game goes on. I would imagine the pieces are probably going to outperform the queen. So that's what should have happened. That was the only move that, that Black had. Obviously, it's a tough move to find in a position like this. So Black actually played the move f6, which is a big mistake. 
white captured with the bishop, and again we have the threat on the queen. And black decided that instead of moving the queen, well, first of all, you can't move the queen because this is just checkmate in one move, okay? Um, they didn't really see any other options besides losing the queen, and so they decided to sacrifice the rook on f6. Now, just if you're wondering, a better move would have been rook f7, a clever little trick to kind of swap queens that way. That would have been better for black, but they didn't see that. So they captured on f6. We have pawn takes, and then black makes the move d5, trying trying to get some more pieces into the game, create some space for the king to run to. But it is not good enough. We have f7 check, king to e7, and the beautiful double queen checkmate, f8 queen. That's 15 moves, two queens, and a checkmate. Beautiful stuff. Um, just goes to show how these tricky lines, even just one wrong move, and it can be over just like that. So very important if you're going to play those double-edged and exciting lines that you really pay close attention and work on your tactics. Otherwise, this kind of stuff can happen. Well, hey guys, I hope you learned something from this video and you have a couple of traps to look out for when you play the Sicilian. If you enjoyed this video, you're not going to want to miss this one over here where I look at some other traps in different openings where the games ended very, very shortly. And again, those are from high-rated players, so make sure you check that out as well. As always, thanks so much for watching. Stay sharp, play smart, and take care.